GT40 head before and after. Let's tell you how we did it. Welcome to another episode of Alpine Garage. For those of you who don't know, we are building a 73 Ford Bronco and we are at the engine portion of it now. We've already built the lower 347 and put a pretty good cam in there, I would say. And we need to be able to match the heads to that. And although we will probably go aftermarket at some point, we wanted, since we have the GT40 heads, we wanted to do give our hand at porting because obviously it's called Alpine Garage, which means we actually do things in our garage. So we need to do this. So at this point, I, mean, I have never ported heads before. Um, I have done some head work, meaning pulled springs out, changed valves, things like that, but I've never, I've also lapped, but I've never actually physically gone in and ported. Now, if you watch porting videos, there are all kinds of techniques. People are saying, do this, don't do this. And then there's a lot of contradiction too. Some people say to do this, and then the other side will say, no, no, don't do that. That will ruin the head flow. I've uh, been watching a lot of videos, been reading a lot of old technical articles on porting small block Ford heads, and then also some specifically on the GT40s. So what I did was I went and took every piece of advice. So I literally, as I was reading, I made notes and I broke it down between combustion chamber, a valve lapping, intake and exhaust runners, and then also the squish, which is where the cylinder meets the flat part of the head. So I take all those into account and I literally wrote down every single piece of advice from probably close to 20 videos and maybe close to 50 articles. So there you go. Every piece of advice that's out there went into these heads and I'm going to go into each one of them and you can either take this advice or not. Again, I've never ported before, uh, but doing everything else on an engine, I honestly don't feel like I've already done this one and I honestly did not feel like it was that hard. Now, honestly, this one side probably took me close to a month. So I'm going to break this up into four parts. Those four parts are going to be combustion chamber, intake, exhaust, and then lapping. So let's start with combustion chamber. Number one, combustion chamber. So there were a lot of articles out there that said, don't do anything with the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber needs to be left other than maybe any flaws that are in it. They need to be left the way they are uh, because you don't want to ruin, uh, you don't want to create points that are going to create detonation. And at the same time, you also don't want to, or at least I don't want to increase the volume of this, comp uh, this compression chamber. There is other information out there that states that you should at least smooth it out and unshroud the valves. So that's what I decided to do. I saw more on the, if you're gonna touch it, touch it lightly, but make sure that if there's anything, any areas that would actually cause detonation, any small areas that would cause um, a, a point in the combustion chamber to get hotter than the rest of the combustion chamber, to remove that. Specifically, they talked about the top of where the spark plug goes, which is just basically kind of a small hump on top of the spark plug. I basically just sanded that down. Not a lot, just a little bit, just enough to make it where I thought it felt smooth all the way across the combustion chamber right there. The second thing I did was there's two points here, a point here and a point here, where it pops up, there's an indention here and it pops up and it comes back down. I actually sanded that down just a little bit. Again, I didn't modify a lot. I just basically rounded it out right there. And then the third thing that I did was I unshrouded the valve. So if you look at the old heads, it's hard to see because it has so much on there. But right there and right there, that difference right there, there's a ledge right there. And it's a very sharp ledge. And that's where when the valve is seated, it actually shrouds that valve. So what I decided to do is I decided to take a small Dremel and I went to that and I smoothed out that ledge. I didn't take it down very much. I literally took it down to where with my finger I could no longer feel the ledge. So now, theoretically speaking, when the piston comes up and compresses and pulls back and the exhaust valve opens, the air should move into the valve a little bit cleaner right there and not cause any turbulence. So that's what I did. I had to do it very carefully as not to impact the actual mating surface of the valve. And in all of these, I didn't touch it one time. So as long as you go slow, and this part probably took me longer than any other part of the head. I don't even know if it's going to be valuable, but I went and did it anyway. I didn't touch 
hardly anything else in here. Basically just smoothed it out. If there are any little rough surfaces, I smoothed those out. But other than that, the combustion chamber is exactly like it was, other than the fact that it was, it's unshrouded and a few of those little high points were taken out. So that's the combustion chamber. You can also tell that between this one and this one, this one has been cleaned up with a Scotch-Brite pad, but I actually took a flat file, which is this guy right here. Uh, it's a fairly expensive file. I've had it for a while, but I know that this file is flat. So and what I did was I actually took out these keepers right here. And the way you do that is you're going to soak these with penetrant. And then from the back side, there's a little small ledge that you can get your screwdriver into and then just tap around, move the screwdriver around the back side, and this will loosen up and actually just fall out. So therefore I can get the entire head flat. If you leave those in there, you're not going to get this flat if you try to file it yourself. Then very lightly, so very lightly, and with no pressure, like not bending on the uh, file, I've kept my hand right in the middle of the file, right so where it goes right over the valves, kept it at a 45 degree angle, and I didn't put any pressure on the tang right here. I actually lifted up on the tang just a little bit to make sure I was not putting any pressure on it. And I flat filed it from both directions. And I just slowly flat filed it from both directions. This right here to get this flat took me close to six hours of filing. I could have taken it to a machine shop and had them do it, but then what fun is that? I wanted to do it myself. So anyway, I got this completely flat. So now I've got the squish flat and I've got the combustion chamber already modified. And so uh, at this point, I'm going to leave this just the way it is. Now let's get into the intake. One of the things you'll notice on the intake right here is there is a vein right there where the casting is. And I'm going to mark that in black. But there's a vein running right in here. Those kind of things I'm going to take out, out with a burr and make sure that they're completely flat. The second thing you're going to notice is the back cut here where they were cutting the valves. There is a ledge right there that runs all the way around the bowl, or all the way around the throat. And I don't want to open that up too much, but I definitely want to level it out because the step between here and here creation of the ledge, and there's a big one right there up here on the, on the short radius. That right there I want to take out so that it's nice and smooth going around. I'm not taking out very much material in this head because I don't want to mess up the flow, but I am going to round everything out. Now, one of the things that I noticed that uh, there was a lot of conjecture about is, is the valve guide. Now, one thing that a lot of people talk about is what you should do with the valve guide right here. So the valve guide coming on the intake, it does have a little bit when flow, remember flow is going in this direction. So if you had water flowing over this, it would create an eddy on the back side of this valve, and which might actually help the mixing of the fuel in the air. But so far that I've read, everybody wants this to be milled down a little bit and rounded out. So we're rounding this ledge out. And I'm going to round it out all the way to probably just a hair around where the valve guide actually is. I don't want to actually get into the valve guide, uh, but I do want to round it out to that. And then the second thing that I heard is you've got the spark plug hole right here. And you want to aim, you want to create a vein, like a wind vein, that aims toward the spark plug. So I'm making a mark right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually grind this too much. And the rest of this is going to be shaped a little bit like a wind vane. And it's going to come in just a little bit right here and in there. So what's going to happen is this air is going to come in. It's going to hit the back of this bowl right here. And then this vane is going to help direct the air directly out towards the... Uh, towards the center of the combustion chamber. So that's that's the way. Now that's what I did on this head over here. And I made like a little vein in there in all in this one. And then in the exhaust ports, I did the same thing, only going the opposite direction. And then, and then the last thing that I did was I just kind of opened this up on the roof just a little bit, right around the backside here. So that as it was flowing in, it could hold more air and kind of get a little bit smoother drop right into here. I did not polish the intake because it says do not polish the intake. You want that a little bit of swirl happening to keep the uh, mixture of the air and the fuel. Now on the intake side of the intake right here, you see there's another vein. That's that same vein that ran all the way through. 
So I'm gonna grind all that down right there. That's where the casting is. There's also one on this back side right here. There's a lot of carbon in this thing. There's another one on the back side right there. I'm gonna grind those out. One thing that I did notice that everybody agreed on is you don't wanna do a lot to the floor right here. You wanna do more to the roof and less to the floor. You can, and then also a little bit more to the long curve side and a little less to the short curve side. So then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to gasket match this. So I'm gonna put the gasket over the top. I'm gonna to draw out where the gasket matches the intake on this side, and then I'm gonna grind all the way to that line, and then I'm gonna fade it in so that when the air is coming through, it'll compress a little bit and speed up the air going into the valve. And it's as simple as that. So that, that's the intake right there. Now the exhaust, everybody agrees that the exhaust is something that you really don't, I should say, you know, here's where the controversy comes from. So I'm reading some that say that you want to open up the exhaust more. I see others that say not to open up the exhaust a whole lot because um, of the reversion that happens in exhaust, meaning that as the air goes out into the head, when this valve closes, actually the the pressure from inside can push that air back up into this uh, back up into the bowl here so if you make it too big then the reversion happens a little bit more and that's what i've heard so i'm not going to actually make this exhaust a whole lot bigger it is going to be bigger but i'm not spending a ton of time on it one of the things i am going to do is again right around this area right in here there's a giant lip in fact Right here, it basically just falls off a cliff on the short side runner right there. Now, when you're thinking about air escaping, the air is actually going to be escaping in this direction right here. So I want this curve to be nice and flat, and there's a ledge right there that I've got to, I've got to mill down a little bit. And then you also see this giant, there's a ledge right there. You can see where my marker is, is hitting, where the valve guide has been cut in. So I'm gonna round this out and flatten it up a little bit and then also create a vein right about there. I don't know if you can see or not, but I'm gonna create a vein right about there which points directly out the exhaust. So as it goes in, it'll actually help um, make the air linear going out a little bit more. And then I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. Now, with the exhaust, a lot of people agree that you can polish the exhaust if you want to and it helps push the gases out because you're not mixing anything in this bowl right here, whereas in the intake, you're keeping the air and the fuel mixed, and here you're not. So if you wanted to polish that, go for it. We're not gonna polish it. We're just gonna make it real super smooth. Now on the back side here, uh, you'll notice that you don't have an exact gasket match right there. So the gasket comes all the way out here. So I thought, I've seen some people that said mill this or uh, use a burr and get all the way down and gasket match the exhaust. I also read quite a few others that said that if you do that, what's gonna happen is, especially on this short side or the, or the floor, is the reversion's going to increase and it's actually gonna be fighting air in and out of this exhaust right here. So at this point, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up a little bit, specifically the ceiling, but I'm not gonna do much with the floor. And then I'm gonna bring the edges out to where the gasket is, which isn't much. So it will be open more, but it won't be open a lot. And I'll still keep this little curvature here to help keep the reversion down. At least that's what I've seen from a lot of what a lot of people are talking about. And then, I'm not sure if you can see the Thermactor or not. Let's look and see if you can see it. And then you have the Thermactor, which is right here. So there's a divot right in there that you can see that can cause air to disrupt there. So what I'm gonna do is the vein that I'm gonna create is gonna be pointing directly out here. So I'm gonna shape this a little bit more to create a little bit more flow right here. And then I'm gonna bring this hump right there, bring that down, flat round off the sides just a little bit. I'm not gonna go super deep. I don't wanna take a lot of material out of here. And then I'm just gonna keep, and then I'm gonna round everything out, smooth it out. There's a lot of small ledges and stuff like that in there that were passed in. And I'm gonna get rid of those, clean that up. So as you can see with the exhaust, we're not gonna do much to that. We're just gonna make it flow a little bit better, but also try to keep the reversion down to a minimum. All right, so as you can see, this head has been done. So I have used a file to kind of flatten this out. And then I took and ground this down just a little bit to create a little bit more flow through here. 
Same thing on this edge right here. This edge is super high and I uh, wanted to kind of round that off just a little bit. And then right here, right where the spark plug comes through, I rounded that off just a little bit as well just to try to keep that from being a hot spot. Then what I did was I took some die chem and I circled the entire area here, here and here. And I went through and I ground down these ledges. Now, it's really hard to tell uh, what I was able to get done, uh, but the, there is no ledge here anymore. Where there was a really sharp ledge, you can actually feel the sharpness. Now, it's, it's rounded off right around here. There's, uh, I can't get too super close to it, or I'm going right into the seat here, so I don't want to do that. Uh, but I took as much off as I could around the, around the sides here in order to get that lip gone. So that created a little extra flow. And then around this back side right here where the valves were cut, it cut into the head a little bit. They cut into the combustion chamber. So I just ran that off just a little bit. So really nothing else was done to this. This is a pretty, pretty long process to get everything flattened out because you don't want to damage this. Uh, but it turned out pretty good and I'm, I'm happy with it. So we're going to leave it just like it is. I'm not going to do anything else to it. So now the bowl. The bowl is one of the most important parts of this scenario because you're letting in fuel at this point. Fuel's coming right down here and out this side right here. So one of the areas that I wanted to concentrate on was this ledge that came across right here where they actually cut the, the valve seat. There's a sharp edge right there so I went through with a sanding roll and I, I sanded down this entire area to make it nice and smooth. And then I dropped that sanding roll in just a little bit to right about here. Now if you notice I actually marked it in black now you can see that vein that I cut in it. So it's smooth coming over the top of the valve guide and then as air circulates right through here this vein is actually pushing it straight up here to where the spark plug is. So this makes a real smooth transition and I left it as you can tell, listen, it's a little bit rough there so I didn't polish it out so that we can get a good swirl going in there and we get a good mixture. Now on, on the back side here you can't see this but there was also a cut. This cut came all the way back up around here and it was really sharp right there. So I just removed the sharpness there but it didn't take out too much. Now the throat which is basically this area right here is going to be probably a little short of 90 percent and they're saying that you can go as big as like 92%, 91, 92%. But I didn't go to exact tolerances. I didn't measure this. I know what it is stock and I didn't take that much out. So I probably added one millimeter to this and that's it. So I didn't really do a lot to this side. Now let's go to the other side of the intake and I'll show you what I did there. Now the first thing we did was we gasket matched it. So I put the gasket on. We, drew a, we, uh, we colored in black anywhere with the gasket was open right there and then I took a burr similar to this one only the square version of it and went through and first made the outline match where the black was all the way around now because this head is upside down this is actually the ceiling and this is actually the floor so what floor means is that the cylinders are going to be right here this is the cylinders and the floor right here, you don't want to do a ton to the floor. That's one of the things that I, I do know. But we did gasket match it. We just didn't take a lot of material right here out of the floor. We took most of it uh, out of the roof. You also have the short curve, which is right here. And then you have the long curve. The long curve is as the air comes in, it actually runs down this runner and it runs right down here to the valve guide. So this right here, I did take some material out of here. I matched the gasket right there and then I carried that all the way through this but on the gasket matches here all I did was fade this in I just faded this in I opened this up so that's kind of how I did that based on the information that I read there were also two large casting veins one there and one there and then on this side down here there was a giant like just a, a flaw and then down here there was just a giant flaw down there that was big enough to where it would hook my fingernail. So I went ahead and removed that as well, uh, trying to make this flow as nicely as possible. So we use lapping compound. We put it in there, put the valve in there. And when we're lapping it, we're doing quarter turns with the lap stick. And we would just do that until the sound, because you can hear the grinding sound. 
until the sound stops. Then we picked up the valve slightly, turned it about a third of the way around, put it back down, and then the crunching began again, and we did that until we didn't hear anything else. Pick it up, go about another 30%, go back down, and then do that. So that, that's one grind all the way around. Now, the seats were pitted, so I had to do a little extra. So we basically did that as many times as we needed to in order to get the pits out which is what we did. So now, if you look at it, there are no pits in this seat. And if you look at the valve, the valve looks the same way. So very nice. I also marked them to make sure that they went into the right guide. I'm not going to do a three-angle valve job on it just because I don't think I'm going to hold on to these heads long term. Uh, I just want to get some more power out of them, get the engine running, run it down the road, get a dyno on it, and then change the heads out and see how the dyno affected it. So that's kind of what our goal was here. Our goal was to clean this up, get it ported just mildly, probably a stage one port I would imagine is what you call it, and then get some numbers on it and then, and then move forward. And that is an overview of kind of what we're doing with the heads. Uh, I haven't done this one yet, but I'm gonna copy this one. And then if I make any changes to this one, I'll just bring it back over. And then once I'm done, I'll give them a clean and we'll put them on the motor and we're gonna be good. And one, one other thing, so what I did with the valves, when the valves came out, you'll notice that completely carbon suited right there, especially the exhaust valves. So what I did was I actually put them in a drill press and put some electrical tape around the ends. And then I slowly worked uh, some Scotch-Brite up and down to get the valves cleaned up. And they cleaned up pretty good, as you can as you can see. That carbon came completely off. They, these haven't been solvent cleaned yet. These have just been through the drill press to get the carbon that was caked on them off. So I'm happy with that. And the seats on the valves actually look good too. There's no pitting in there anymore. So I know those will seal well. And I think these heads are ready, or this head is ready to assemble. So we're gonna get this one done. That's a wrap from Alpine Garage. Tell me what you think of this in the comments, and I'll see you in the live stream.